Welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob. And really what it comes down to is just focusing a little bit too much on the short term and data points. And what I'm talking about is there was an article that came out of uh, BNN Bloomberg. And it talks about how Bitcoin breaks away from stocks and 50% surge defying macro parallel. And it sounds so good. And there was a lot of great points in here that I was going to talk to you about, but I'm not. And I'm just going to give you just a paraphrase of what it says. Essentially, what it's talking about is that Bitcoin and the crypto market has decoupled in a, in a correlation coefficient away from stocks. And it gives all these data and points. And I'm like, that's fantastic. And I took a look at it. I'm like, I don't think that's right. Because when I take a look at just the correlation coefficient, I take a look at uh, Ben's side, you know, the cryptoverse. And of course, we're taking a look at two data points. We're taking a look at Bitcoin and the S&P 500. When it's positive or above this green line, it means things are in lockstep. They're doing the exact same things. Bitcoin goes up. S&P 500 goes up, Bitcoin goes down, S&P 500 goes down, and so on and so forth. If it's in the negative, it does the exact opposite. One goes down, one goes up, or one goes up, one goes down. Essentially, that's what it is. And I took a look at it, I'm like, wait, uh, I'm just looking at this right here. In November, it was positive. Now, down here in December 20, 2022, it was very negative. So it was, it was uh, what that article said. But I'm like, today is not that way. It's actually 0.8. It's almost perfectly correlated. And then I thought well, maybe I'll zoom out a little bit. And I did. And we can take a look here that, yeah, it looks pretty much what they're talking about. For like the past year or so from January, it was positive, positive, positive. And then it went negative. And of course, it's right back to where it was again. And I zoom out even farther in 2011 or so. And we can see that, yeah, it was, it was all over the place. So I just, I'm focusing too much on the short term. I got to stop that because in the long term is really where it's at. I don't know where you're at or what you're here for. I can't give you financial advice on a financial planner, but I'm here for the long haul in the years. But there is one more thing I'd like to say, and that is that um, it's funny because like if you take a look at or watch any YouTube channel or any type of article in Bloomberg or any kind of you know uh, news article, you can see that they'll talk about data points like it is the utmost thing that will separate fact from fiction. And in reality, all these data points can be manipulated. I'm going to show you some. So we have the same thing with Bitcoin, S&P 500, Logarithmic, Pearson. There's a correlation time frame. Watch this. I'm going to go from 60 days to 30 days. Whoopsie. So we can see that in actuality, if we just want to manipulate the data, and not manipulate, I should just say change the data, uh, that article is even more correct. Uh, today, it is actually negative correlation between S&P 500 and Bitcoin. If we take a look over here, I don't know, just take the 60 day and just go to 30 day, what happens? Wow, they're the same thing. And then we take a look at correlation, 60 day to 30 day. <laughs> so again, be careful with when you zone in on the near term because all those data points can be changed quite frequently just with the click of a button or adding in or taking out some little point. And I will just say this, if you're gonna focus you know, you can focus in on the on the short term, but in all honesty, like the S&P 500 today looking pretty bad. And we'll talk about why. But, you know, over six months, well, it still looks pretty bad, actually. Last five years, pretty good. And then max looking fantastic if you've been in the market for like 20 years or so. Same thing with NASDAQ. You got one for one day. Eh, not too bad. If you take a look at a year. Eh, OK, not too great. But if you take a look at all, hey, you know, I got to tell you looking pretty good over, over the decades. And of course, Bitcoin, if we just go to this from 24 hours to, I don't know, say a year, not too great. We just really zoom out, looking pretty darn good as far as where we are, 670 bucks or whatever else over time. So again, the short term, it's a little bit uh, hazy sometimes. If you want to, when in doubt, just zoom out, makes things a lot easier. And here's another point. Everybody's freaking out about this, potential upcoming recession. Some say it's a hard, a hard landing, some say it's a soft landing, nobody really knows. This is an article from Yahoo Finance. And it talks about why the market dipped today. And it's because of two reasons. Well, there's, there's more, but this is a, a good one. Walmart and Home Depot came out. This is what they said. Walmart warned everybody that it was cautious about the outlook for the economy and said consumers pressured by inflation shopping for lower price items may negatively impact margins. And they hear that and like, oh, that means that the earnings is gonna go down, which means we're going to make that stock go down because we're gonna start selling because everybody freaks out. Same thing with Home Depot. They said, hey, we've got some uh, 
disappointing fourth quarter results, and we think it's in for a challenging 2023. And their shares went down 5% just from a couple sentences. And of course, there's more to that. Earnings report came out and so, so on and so forth. But again, if you're looking at the near term, it'll make you crazy. So if you look at the, the long term, because people are worried about these recessions, you know how long recessions usually last for? About a year, year and a half. Not the greatest time, but it is natural. It's a natural cycle. There are no forever bull markets. There are no forever bear markets. And you're going to see that, you know, over 2008 and 2009, that was a bad one. Seemed to get out of that, no problems. And we had one in 2001. We had back here in the uh, 90s, early 90s, then in the 80s, the 70s, and the 60s. It doesn't last too long. Pay attention to the bigger trends, which is over time in between the recessions is economic expansion. And we like that. And that would just leads me to my last points, which is this. I can't tell you what's going to happen in the short term. I don't think really anybody ha can. There's a lot of people guessing out there and they're using a lot of data points, but who knows if they're using all the data points. This is what I do. I dollar cost average every day. And I still think we have some downward momentum to go. So if I'm right, great. You know what that means? I'm going to start, I get to buy crypto at a much lower price. And if I'm wrong, well, boo-hoo, I get some profits. So for dollar cost averaging, I do this every day. I buy this, most of these every day, some I buy every week. Bitcoin, Polygon, or Matic, Avalanche, Ethereum, Cosmos, Chainlink, Near, Algorand, Cardano, Polkadot, and a couple of ones I will not name because they are super risky. And I don't want you to FOMO into those just because I've heard some good things from some people. And that's really what it comes down to is dollar cost averaging. There is a link in the description. And I give you five examples. We take a look at Bitcoin, how much you would get over, he spent $100 every week. And over the last uh, cycle, we take a look at Ethereum, take a look at Cardano, and also take a look at Dash and Salt and everything else. I'm not going to go over it. I'm just going to tell you that uh, the longer you're in the game, most of the time, the better off you are. So I'm really not concerned about the short term. It's all about the long term, which leads me to my last point, I trust. So iTrust put out an email. And they said, hey, great news. Uh, we're switching from our custodial partners of Coinbase Custody and Fireblocks, or what I thought was. And we're going to be using Fortress Trust. And I'm like, I don't know who Fortress Trust is. Why do you guys do this to me? We just had a tumultuous 2022. Now you got to switch things up. I don't understand. So I'm like, you guys got to get somebody on the show because I don't understand what's going on. I know a lot of people don't either, so let's get somebody. I'm just going to tell you there's going to be a couple parts here where I'm going to give them a pushback, especially on the yield, but just take a listen. Be right back. To sponsor the show, I Trust. And what they came out and they said that there's going to be a little bit of a changes. So what I want to do is uh, bring in somebody to uh, help us out, and that is uh, Jared Feldman. And he is a VP of Client Experiences at I Trust. So Jared, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, as usual. Yeah, so we had done... Now, I've been with you guys now for two years, and it's a very uh, reasonably simple process. I don't want to pay a bunch of taxes when I get older, 59 and a half or 65, whatnot, for my Roth IRA. And I felt it necessary to put that into, me personally, a Roth IRA. This is the same thing that Peter Thiel did. He, that's how he turned $2,000 into $5 billion. There's a link in the description. You can find out what I'm talking about there. But essentially use a Roth IRA. And we're talking about crypto and digital assets for ourselves. But there was a tweet that was put out and actually an email that came about as well. And it said that you guys are moving uh, and integrating with Fortress Trust Company. And it means, it says here, instant KYC processing, streamline onboarding, large variety of crypto assets, additional alternative assets, and more. I always like that section and more. So talk to us real quick about who exactly Fortress is and why did you guys change? Because it looks like things were doing uh, okay using uh, Fireblocks and Coinbase custody. For sure. And uh, you and I actually have similar anniversaries with iTrust Capital. I just hit uh, two, two plus years myself. Okay. But it's a, it's a really good question. And I think any sort of announcement like this begs questions and we enjoy creating transparency for our clients. I have an expression that I really like and it's what, what got you here isn't necessarily going to get you there. Mm -hmm. And this is a prime example of that because we've had a great experience with our current trust company. It's called M2 Trust Services. We're going to be moving on to Fortress because we see an opportunity to plug in to, to more modern infrastructure, especially from a digital asset standpoint. 
And I think that the nature of the question as well is a good opportunity to briefly talk about our structure because the way that we work, there's a lot of regulatory compliance that's baked in to our company because of the fact that we're an IRA provider and any sort of trust company that we use is an IRA provider. So if you look at M2, for example, they leveraged Coinbase Prime as well as Fireblocks when it came to institutionally storing the digital assets. But at the same time, their legal claim to be able to provide an IRA is through their chartered trust entity, right? So there's custodianship of the IRA, and then there's actual physical custodianship of the assets. So Fortress has their own chartered trust through the state of Nevada, and they they leverage, as, as, as far as I know, fireblocks when it comes to the institutional storage for the digital assets themselves. Gotcha. Okay. So that would take us into, you know, a little bit of uh, how I get, but let's just break it down into a little bit more and get into the, uh, we'll say the minutia of what's going on. So when we take a look here, what exactly are they doing that is new as opposed to just custodianship? Because you guys put out, uh, you had a, a blog post and it's, you said, well, here's what uh, Fortress brings to iTrust Capital, plus 30 crypto trading pairs. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I mean, you guys, you guys have that. You guys have 30, you guys have a ton of trading pairs actually for, uh, in, in the IRA and you have two metals. You got gold and silver, which is, I own both of those as a matter of fact. And also you talk about, uh, blockchain payment infrastructure, embeddable account compliance and payment widgets. You said supervised by the Nevada banking commission. That's great. Qualified custodian under sec regs, uh, advisors act of 1940 USC 408. And then you talk about the audits, which of course is great. Monthly penetration testing by independent firms, and the team itself it looks pretty good. But uh, again, what are they? What are they bringing to us besides just the custodianship? So when you talk about your show in particular, especially your show and and the theme over the last few few months, it's almost like your campaign: no scams, zero percent on exchanges. You're 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 kind of hitting all these uh, essential food groups for you and your audience. Our audience, while we have a lot of people who are content and love the platform the way it is, mm -hmm. we get a lot of feedback from people, a lot of constructive criticism, a lot of things that people <laughs> wanna see. And it's our responsibility to respond to that criticism and that feedback because we don't just wanna stay complacent and keep the platform the way that it is. Right. So when you look at the Fortress opportunity, that's what it really brings for us is the opportunity to deliver on a lot of these requests in a more timely manner. Just since I started working at iTrust Capital over two years ago, people have wanted to see uh, dollar cost averaging right. and being able to systematically withdraw money from their bank account based on when they receive a paycheck. People want new asset classes. People want yield on their USD. And these are things that we have not been able to deliver on. We've been great at delivering on other things. We did a beta for staking. Uh, we have conditional transactions, but we still want to do more order types. We still want to have better liquidity options. We still want uh, tighter spreads on trading. We really want to continue to be ambitious. And then and the, and the Fortress agreement and the arrangement with them is really a reflection of that ambition. So we look forward to having some of those things rolled out by mid-year the most exciting one for me when you look at the press release is the yield on us dollar because people are not able to get sufficient yield on their fiat in the legacy world right now we're a digital ira provider we've mostly attracted gold and silver and digital asset enthusiasts and now we have an opportunity to attract people who might just want to get some yield on their cash while being able to allocate into some of these digital and physical commodities yeah, I'm with you, except for the yield. That has been a dirty word. I'm sorry, Jared, this has been a dirty word, uh, especially with all the exchanges. It seems like like the yield, when you do things with, with yield, we we saw that in the Ponzi or the different problems with the different exchanges, we'll say like a Celsius and like a Voyager and like an FTX and whatever else and BlockFi. When you talk about yields, I mean, that could be somebody down the road where you guys are offering that. Me personally, I wouldn't go for it, but I will tell you, I do like the, the aspect of the dollar cost averaging, the ability to put in stop orders and stop losses, things like that, and actually do a little bit more of a trading within your 
uh, IRA account because it is a it is a tax free trade that you are doing as long as you you know wait, wait that time, and then a host of other things that that, that you uh, you touched on. So these things are good, and I will just uh, would like to talk about this real quick. I think it's important, especially. Do you mind if I kind of touch on that? Yes. That yield thing for Go a second. Right ahead. So love love that you brought it up is one of the first things that I thought of as well. Mm-hmm. There's a big difference between offering yield on a digital asset or even on a stable coin versus offering it through a cash suite program that's affiliated with FDIC insured USD. So what we'll do is as we roll out that program, we're going to create a a painful amount of disclosures and create a lot of transparency for people so they can see why our program is going to be inherently different than those programs. In fact, when we structure it and launch it, it's going to look and feel more like a legacy, just general yield product on cash, like you would get through a high yield savings account rather than something that was through um, a, a yield program that operated more like a high risk hedge fund product, like some of these other exchange products we saw. Great. I will uh, wait in the background, see how it all goes for you guys and make a decision later. Okay. I appreciate it. So on this one, on the last part here, which is what we're talking about on balance sheet, I know you guys had talked about this before, especially for yourself, but with Fortress, they make it very clear. I, I like this whole part. As a regulated financial institution, if anything happens to Fortress, then the banking commissioner's staff takes control to ensure an orderly, secure transition of assets or assets and data to another trust company or bank. Assets are not on the balance sheet, which is what happened with FTX. All assets are held FBO for benefit of and segregated for each customer individually and have no risk of third-party claims associated with Fortress. Essentially, what they're saying is there is no commingling of funds. So anything you want to add on this one? I think it's a positive, definitely. And it's really timely. Right. It's when you look at the the news and a, a lot of the things that have made waves through social media uh, over the last month or so. And the one of the emphasis has been this idea of qualified custody for assets. And when you look at a company that has to keep funds in qualified custody, it has to be off balance sheet. Well, what does off balance sheet mean? There was a lot of news last year pertaining to retail clients who found out that the exchange they used actually would keep the funds for themselves potentially in the event of bankruptcy. Why is that? Because those exchanges keep client funds on balance sheet. Keeping it off balance sheet makes it not subject to creditors in the event that something bad were to happen to the underlying company. So it's such a powerful, important concept that people would have overlooked even just three years when our company was established. And now our aspect of qualified custody might become the standard for digital asset uh, providers throughout the country. So we're really excited by that concept. That sounds good. So, so look, Jared, thanks for stopping by. That explains a little bit more about what's going on because it was, I just was looking at it. I'm like, I wonder why they transferred over. Cause it looked like things were going pretty smoothly. But like you said, if you want to go into the next, next part, what got you there is, <laughs> isn't always the same thing. And then Very lastly, true. Lastly, yes, very true. Lastly, I'll just say, if you're looking for a link to iTrust, this is an affiliate link, just so everybody knows. If you can't stand affiliate links, go right to iTrust Capital. I'm sure you can find the website itself. But if not, there's a link in the description. Looks just like that. There's also a video about how uh, uh, iTrust works and how I've set it up and everything else. But that is it. So, Jared, again, thanks for stopping by. We appreciate it. For sure. Happy to be here. All right. Everybody, let's jump back. Okay, that's it. So I hope that made sense. I want to thank uh, uh, ITRA for coming on. Again, the whole thing with the yield gives me PTSD. I'm not a big fan of that. But we did talk afterwards. It goes, Rob, you understand, we're not giving 10, 14%, 16%. It's like one, one and a half percent, you know, kind of like, you know, T bills and things like that. I go, you know what? That's great. Still not going to touch it. So I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. That seems to work. And off you go. You can do whatever you want to do. It's just the way that I'm going to go. And that's it. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. That's it for today. Thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.